Real quick, just as you know, I said, Jerry, tell me something about yourself you did in high school. Uh, Blow people away. He says, I did nothing. I was just terrible. I said, okay, I'm going to tell him that. He was terrible. But he graduated high school at 16 years old. He bought his first home at 18 years old. Right? From Richmond, Virginia, let's give it up for Jerry Dennis! How's everybody doing? Yes! This is my first Cabo. But, about a year and a half ago, I was at Build, and I sent Brent this message, and I said, I'm coming for the stage, Brent. So I'm happy to be in Cabo for the first time. I'm happy to be on stage in Cabo. Thank you, Brent, for putting these things on. This is just the absolute best. So who am I? I'm Jared Davis. I'm 34 years old. I actually got into real estate about 10 years ago. Uh, as Gene had brought out, I got my license uh, early. I graduated high school at 16. Uh, did not go to college. Started selling advertising. And at 18, I bur- my f- bought my first house. Now, at 23, I bought my second house. And when I did that, the agent that helped me, he was a broker at a local franchise, he told me, dude, you've got to get into real estate. You will make so much more money than selling ads. So I told myself, why not? I hate selling ads. I didn't go to college. I can't get any interviews to sell pharma or meds or anything else. So I got the license. And I thought to myself, how hard can it be? You hear a couple chuckles. It was hard. It was so difficult. I was not some rock star agent in the first year. You know, it took me seven months to get a paycheck. Seven months. My first deal, it went under in month three. They failed financing. My fourth month, I put under a short sale. The bank never approved it. By month six, I was thinking, why am I doing this? But month seven, I closed the deal, and I got a little traction. Now, that second year, it wasn't as bad. I think I did around 30 deals, made a little money. I was still selling ads full-time. So you know what? I'm going to quit this other job. I'm going to go full-time into real estate. Third year, I was the number one agent at my franchise broker. Thought I was doing something, so I told myself, I guess just to start building a team, because that'd be easy, right? More chuckles. Yeah, it wasn't easy. It was difficult to build the team out. And I was at a brokerage that didn't give me a lot of support. It didn't give me training. There was no other teams to follow. But thankfully, four years ago, I found this company, EXP. And it was then that I was able to get in the room with people and collaborate and understand what it took to build a real real estate business. From there, we went on to hit almost 300 deals on track this year, $100 million in volume. We have over 30 agents on our team. We've built out a mortgage company. We've built out a title company. We started flipping houses. We started buying apartment buildings. We started syndicating. But now it's been 10 years. But again... What I realized is it didn't happen overnight. It was hard. And one of my favorite motivational speakers growing up was Les Brown. The best. He used to tell a story. Who's heard the story of the Chinese bamboo tree? See a couple of hands. Good. If you haven't, this is one of my favorite stories Les Brown tells, and I'm going to share it with you because it's so applicable in our business today. You know, the Chinese bamboo tree takes five years after planting to even sprout. So for five years, you have to water and you have to fertilize daily before you see any results whatsoever. So now imagine, you go out to your front yard or your backyard and you plant this tree. And every day you go out and you water and you fertilize and you water and you fertilize. And a month goes by and a year goes by and your neighbors come out and they start asking you, what are you doing? And you're like, I'm growing a bamboo tree. Doesn't look like it. Right? But now, five years later, it sprouts. And do you know what happens? Within five weeks, that tree grows to be some 90 feet tall. So the question is, did it take 
five weeks? Or did it take five years in five weeks? See, we know the answer, don't we? But what's the point? Some of us are not watering or fertilizing at all, and some are not water and fertilizing long enough to get to the point of our tree growing to a massive size. See, it becomes very difficult because we look around at all of these people on stage at all of these people at conferences and we say, man, he's not calling five agents a day. He's not sitting in open houses five days a week. He's not prospecting three hours. And look at this business he's got. But what we don't see is all the watering and fertilizing and work that went in in the beginning for them to get to that level. So how do we do that? What do we do? Well, we started by being hyper accountable. We wanted to double, triple, quadruple down on the things that worked and cut out the stuff that didn't. Look around the room and raise your hand if you sold more last year in 2023 than you did in 2024. It's great. But you're in the minority, right? No, I like it. Yeah, keep it up. There you go. If your hand is up, you should feel great because we know our industry was down 30 to 40% last year. But if your hand is up, look around. If it's not up, find those people. Talk to those people by the pool. Introduce yourself and find out what they did to grow their business, to plant and water through one of the worst market years ever. Right? So what are we doing? Well, we start by being hyper accountable from a sales standpoint. In sales, if you're a solo agent, are you counting every single real estate conversation you have for the week? And the lady that raised her hand, she said, she's not. yes, that's good, right? Do you know how many conversations you had to take to get to the appointment? How many appointments you had to take to get to the sale? See, I guarantee you out of almost everyone in this room, almost no one can tell me how many real estate conversations they had last week. I bet it's 5% tops. But see, it's crucial. If you run a team, do you know how many conversations every single agent on your team is having every week? See, how many of you sit down with a team agent and they tell you, I'm working, I'm working, I'm working, but nothing's happening? You start counting the conversations, you'll realize you thought they were working. They think they're working, but they're maybe watering one or two days a week. Do you want to wait five years to see that nothing's going to sprout? Do you want to waste your team resources, your legion, your time, or as a solo agent, time that you could be doing something else when you realize that nothing's going to happen? See, so this is what we do. On our team, we do morning huddles three days a week. I stagger them Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. These are not team meetings. These are accountability huddles. We run them on Zoom. We ask three questions. How many real estate conversations did you have yesterday? On Tuesday, it would be over the weekend and then yesterday. What was your real estate win yesterday? And what's your real estate goal going to be today? This will change your business for your team if you're doing nothing right this second. As a solo agent, you should be asking yourself the same question. See, because this is what happens. Your producers... They're having 50, 80, 100 conversations a week. They're having real estate wins. They have good real estate goals. If you're not producing, you can see quickly, this person's not watering enough. They're not doing what it takes. And you can make the adjustment, or you can make them realize, hey, maybe this isn't for you. But as a solo agent, 50 conversations a week, guaranteed. Put it as that number. You should be having more, but at least... 50. If you do this, I guarantee you, you will see your sales grow if you're a solo agent, and you will watch your team sales grow if you're running a team. Now, what about agent attraction? What are we doing for these people? I called Brent probably about a year and a half ago, and I asked him, he probably doesn't remember this, but I said, what, am, what do I do to grow my network? You have all these people in all these states. You have all these people in all these countries. How do I, how do I grow if I don't know these people? And what he told me, he said, focus on your backyard. And at the time, I thought, that's crazy. That can't be it. 
You know, I don't have that many agents in my backyard. Look how many agents are all over the world. I'm on all these guys. But see, Brent was right. So you have about 7,500 agents in my city. And just within that city, we have maybe about 300 EXP agents, right? So think about that percentage of almost 90 plus percent of the agents that I talk to are potential EXP agents. So what did we do? We started focusing heavily on events. Three categories, and if you do these right, it should cost you no money at all. The first, social mixers. Really simple. This is how I built it. You go to your local Facebook real estate mastermind page. Maybe your area has a bunch. If it doesn't have one, please start one. But most likely, your area already has a bunch, right? You're going to go right on there, and you're going to say, Hey, guys, this market is tough. We're all tired. We all are at each other's throats on these deals all the time. Who would like to just come together? I'm not going to train you. I'm not going to pitch you. We're not going to allow vendors in at all. This is an event for realtors by realtors to just come together outside of the deal and get to know one another. When I put that on my local Facebook page, I had 300 agents asked to be on the initial invite list. And then I built it out in an evite. It saves the invite list and you just keep reusing it and you keep adding. You do that, you put it on your personal Facebook page, and then you go and you look at your hot list. Hopefully you have your 100 agent hot list already and you add all of them to it. And then you call your favorite local restaurant, your winery, your coffee shop, your rooftop patio, and you say, hey... I'm going to bring 40 people to you on the slowest day of the week. They're going to pay their own tabs, right? What's your slowest night? If I could bring you 40 customers, would you like that? Yes. And then you show up. That's it. You don't need signage. You don't need to make it elaborate. You just set it up and you show up and you become the person that's helping agents build culture in the area, not just with eXp, but across the industry. See, now these agents like you. They get invites and they say, yes, I want to be involved in what he's doing. So now the second thing, role play days. This is great for new agents, but it's good for experience too. Now again, if you're already building a rev share group, you should already be doing this because if you don't teach them how to sell, you're going to lose your agents that you bring in. If you're building a team, you should already be doing this. So we just run them every first and last Thursday of the month. We put it up on Facebook and Instagram and we say, hey, how would you like to fill in the blank? Crush expires. Crush Fizbo's. Circle prospect better than anybody else. You've got to be in this room with us. And then we do it and then we film it. And we say, look at all the people that are in this room role playing with us. We get 25 to 30 agents every single time. You cannot bring agents into a room like that without them wanting to ask questions about how they can be a part of more stuff later. Last, quarterly training events. You're probably already doing some stuff like this, but again, if you're not, make sure you incorporate it. You get some sponsors, you find a location. I've got Brent flying in to Richmond, Virginia in two weeks for us. We'll promote it on Facebook. Again, we do an evite. You get a couple sponsors. You call your mortgage company, your title company, your contractor, and you get them to pay For any kind of lunch that you need, any kind of event space you need, we have an event venue that's free at home because one of our sponsors shares it with us. But if you do these three things and you do it consistently, right, this is going to end up being two, three events a month. There's no way you do not succeed in building a group and a culture of people that want to reach out to you and become a part of your tribe. Here's the last point. You have to do it with sincerity. If you don't care about your fellow agent and you're in this for rev share or you're in this for a dollar, it will not work. See, I love my agents. I love helping every single agent that reaches out to me. See, for years, I watered and I fertilized and I watched as it finally exploded into this business that I never thought I could build. But see, I'm, I'm, I'm good. So at this point, I want to let every other agent that reaches out to me, I want to help them water. I want to help them fertilize. Because I know that if they just listen, 
that they're going to blow up a business that's bigger than they can imagine. And that's what makes me feel good. You can be that agent in your area. You can be that agent for your organization. You can be that agent for your team. But you have to remember, if you lead with love, and you lead with enthusiasm, and you lead with true care for your fellow agents, not only will you be able to, the biggest business you can think of, but you're going to help everybody else. So guys, let's grow. Here's all of my contact information. You can catch me on Instagram, underscore, underscore, the Davis Group. If I can help you grow in any way, investments, apartments, Facebook, YouTube, team building, whatever it is, thank you so much, Brent. Thank you, and thank you, Cabo. Woo!